Welcome to the third and last masterclass in this series given in Edinburgh by the Cuban pianist George Bollett. The work which all the classes are centered around is Rachmaninoff's demanding third piano concerto. And in the previous two sessions, George Bollett has worked on the first and second movements with pianists from Britain, America and Brazil. Today, he concentrates on the finale. 22-year-old Wolfgang Manz comes from Dusseldorf, where he began to play the piano at the age of six. He subsequently studied at Wuppertal, Prague and Hanover, and has already played several times in London's South Bank concert halls, as well as making his debut with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. His competition successes make impressive reading, including the first prize in the 1979 Alfred Cotto competition in Berlin, and audiences in Britain will remember him as second prize winner in the 1981 Leeds competition, which he gave a passionate performance of Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. Here he is working with George Bollett on the first section of the finale, and in particular on what has become a recurrent theme of these masterclasses, the problem of how to gradually build a passage towards a climax. Yeah, yeah. This has to be one of those really absolutely devilish, fiendish passages. You know, it's a, it's a series of, of progressions. I wouldn't do quite so much build-up the first one, and then you come down. And then the second one, maybe you can do a little bit more. Then it has... And then you have, you have two more. But the last one is the one that, where you can really mm -hmm. explode and build it up as, as much as you can. Try it again. It has to be exciting. Hmm? Mm -hmm. No, I'm getting carried away. Come down, come down. Now, now start. The same, the rhythmic pattern has to continue. You can't alter it. Come down, come down. Now, this is the big one. No, 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 no. No, no. Ta -ta -dum, ta -ta -dum, no, you can't do that. Ta -ta -dum, ta -ta -dum, pa -pa -dum. Hmm? You can build it up as much as you want, but rhythmically it has to it has to follow the same pattern. It just won't go. Play that passage, that whole section again. Sounds very good, but but I don't think it'll work. Huh? It's fine. You made a, a kind of a a slight ralentando. 
to the to this uh, to the to the C major. But then just go on. Keep the same tempo. You can't play that so much more slowly. Sounds good. I rather like the way you do it. However, I think that whatever you're doing with dynamics, I think if you would exaggerate it more, it would really be much more effective. In other words, don't be afraid to do. Those. those I don't, I don't really think fits. To go on, I don't, I don't see why you have. too much too much hand movement see if you can play it with absolutely no movement don't think of articulation at all just play from the knuckles down no it reminds me of it reminds me of uh, <coughs> Hoffman said that when he was playing the the Schumann fantasy for Anton Rubinstein when he was studying with him at the beginning of the third movement, in very large letters, Rubinstein wrote, your hands are moving. 
and that's exactly what you have to do with this. Just don't move anything. I notice that you're, you're making all kinds of, of, you know, circular things with your elbow. Just... That's it. That's it. Put your hands on the keys and... That's another typical piece of advice which is characteristic of George Bonnet's teaching throughout these classes. Tips which are always mixed with a good deal of enthusiasm and encouragement. Here he is with Wolfgang Lanz in the last section of the movement towards the work's conclusion. Okay, good, good. That, that, that's all, uh, this is all very fine, very good. All right, play me from here. Starting already at such a high level, where are you going to go? You're going to have no room. Start pianissimo. Exposition here in the recapitulation. You have to go on. Forget that the that the orchestra is playing the ya pa 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 Phrase like this. Look what the orchestra has. And then, don't tr don't try to do it all in one. You can do. Then you're you're really mm -hmm. you're you're energizing and you're reinforcing those marvelous harmonic progressions. Play right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now you you're playing.
because because when you get to those triplets, you're going much faster. Hmm? And that is, I hate to tell you, see that. find that there is a poco a poco accelerando huh? and then there is an alargando hmm? and then there is an, an accelerando and then there is an atempo and then there's a più vivo with a diminuendo and a crescendo and there is nothing here except ritardando hmm? forget it hmm? you'll never it just doesn't work. And Rachmaninoff himself realized it. Mm -hmm. From here, you must tell the conductor, this yeah. from here absolutely must be like a machine to the end. Hmm? As far as tempo. So, play me. Yeah. You're playing staccato, huh? Staccato, big, tenuto, da 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 big, long. From here on, hmm, you can keep the pedal. Hope and pray that you play all the right notes. Hmm? Because if you do mess it up, naturally you have to clean it up with the pedal. Huh? But from here on, just up till there, just one pedal. Play that coda again. Yeah. All right. Now, when I meant that you were playing too staccato, perhaps you were just playing a little too dry, but you don't have to play quite that wet. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. All right, somewhere in between that and, and the other one. Try it. Good. Good, bravo. Good boy. Bollet working with Wolfgang Mantz, the German pianist. Bollet meets Rachmaninoff will continue in a moment. Barry Douglas began his musical training in Belfast before moving to London to study on an open scholarship at the Royal College of Music. His first successes in competitions were, amongst others, the first British Liszt competition in 1978 and later the Hastings competition. Since then, he's gained many international awards at competitions in Italy, America, and Spain. His broadcast extensively on radio and television, and in 1978, he was the subject of a BBC documentary called Rhapsody in Belfast. One of 
Britain's national daily newspapers described him as among the most phenomenally gifted of all young pianists, and went on to say few young pianist careers will be watched more closely. Here he is with his interpretation of the same movement. That's good. The only, the only thing I'm not so keen about is your, your transition here. You seem yeah. to, I don't know, it sounds just a little bit too agonizing. Yeah. Hmm? It's just, uh, just a, a logical build-up from, from where you are here. I seem to lose completely the, 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 the flowing motion that you have, that you have established from here. So, kind of... Play from here. See if you can make it just uh, simply a very beautiful uh, harmonic, melodic transition to the big E flat. I find is that I don't get this. I hear. progression. You're going overboard the other way, huh? But uh, but I think you get the idea. Get yeah, you can you can balance that very well. This is very good. I like the way you. The only thing is, I I'm not so sure that I that I like that the the, the left hand sort of yap up 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 up. All 
all those accentuations in the right hand, in the left hand. Okay. Can you play um, more of the of the of the of the right hand figuration, very crisp and the left hand is just a, a kind of a filling. Play there. Going up the That's very good. That's very good. I like the way you play those chords, huh? And take plenty of time. All right, let's go on. thing I would I would question is after all this nice beautiful scherzando that you do you really can't it, you know you can't keep that down it, it, it's 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 too it's too vigorous I mm -hmm. like to I like to keep a little bit for here you know because you do too much there. it gets a bit that that the old time you know? All right, but, but you can give all you have here, hmm? Hmm. but still have enough differentiation between all this. Play there. <laughs> all right, good. That's, that's fine. If you only use a little more pedal. Bom, 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 bi, ya, pa, 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 pa. You're playing awfully flat, huh? You're playing awfully horizontal. You can do bom 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 bing bom 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 bing bom 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 Learn to 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 drop. like this you, you really want something big yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. you can 
you can do this. And there again, you know, you're, you're getting up to a certain level, hmm? but you're not coming down. Hmm? Okay, I'll do it this time. You can't keep coming, going up, you know, the piano has limitations. Hmm? Yadam, padadam, padadam, Again, <laughs> there I wouldn't do what I suggested earlier. You seem to be, uh, yeah. Be careful. Don't don't compress those triplets. You have a tendency to kind of rush through them. Here, I would go really go up to the top. Da, 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 de, da. Huh? Go up to the top and then come down. But don't don't come down before you get to the top. Play here. very good. It's, it's very good. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. But uh, somehow or other, I am, I am missing pa-pam, 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 peeping, pa-pam, pa-pam. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I think I'm hearing a little more of the ta-tam, pa-pam, pa-pam, pa-pam. And it's pa-pam, 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 pa-pam. Play from that progression. You heard what you did. Yes. You missed a couple of them. Da -pum, da -pum, da -pum, da -pum, yeah. All right. Play it again.
They sound like, uh, like just a, a naked octave. Hmm? Play that again and play those chords. Good, good. That's fine. But from here, whatever you do, just put the pedal down as though you had glue on it, and don't release it until you get up there. Huh? Yeah. Not an easy piece, is it? <laughs> Thank you very much, Barry. Bravo. Bravo. bring this to a close, I would like to say a few words to you six wonderful people that have played for us. I must say, all of you played this work extraordinarily well. You, I am very happy to say, all seem to have a, an affinity for this style of, of music which is a prime requirement for a really first-class performance. One thing I would like to tell you, and this is something which I tell all my, my students, is that you and I have chosen the world's most insane profession. By this I mean that what we strive for is perfection. And perfection, unfortunately, is for mankind unattainable. But we must never stop trying. We must never stop our strife and our striving to get up to that unknown, unreachable goal. I think that all of you, I'm very happy to say, should have a very brilliant future. I only wish you all a very successful and a very long career. And I wish you all well. Thank you. In a moment, we'll have the pleasure of seeing George Bolet himself perform Rachmaninoff's Concerto No. 3 with the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra under the leadership of Bryden Thompson. This is the Arts and Entertainment Network. <laughs>
Good evening from the Usher Hall in Edinburgh, where tonight is the culmination of his series of programmes for BBC television. The Cuban pianist George Bollett will be joined by the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Brighton Thompson, to give a performance of Rachmaninoff's Concerto No. 3 in D minor. Of all Rachmaninoff's works for piano and orchestra, the four concertos and the Paganini Rhapsody, the third is generally considered to be the largest in scale and the most epic in proportion. A romantic concerto in the grand manner, melancholy, brooding, passionate, and as one would expect from a composer who was himself a master pianist, immensely taxing and difficult to play. It was written especially for the composer's first tour of the United States of America, and it is dedicated to another pianist, the man who Rachmaninoff considered the greatest of his contemporary rivals, one of George Bollett's own teachers, Joseph Hoffman. In expressing his admiration for Hoffman in a letter, Rachmaninoff told him the story of three tailors, each of whom had a shop in the same street. The first put up a sign which said, best tailor in the city. So not to be outdone, the second wrote on his sign, best tailor in the world. Faced with such claims, what was the third to do? His sign said simply, best tailor in this street. And this sign, said Rachmaninoff to Hoffman, belongs to you. Rather sadly, Hoffman never played the D minor concerto, partly perhaps because its massive chords didn't suit his unusually small hands. And the first performance was given by Rachmaninoff, who prepared it practicing on a silent dummy keyboard during his boat trip to America, giving the premiere in New York in November 1909 under the baton of Walter Damrosch and another performance conducted by Gustav Mahler shortly afterwards. Although the piece is often performed with the composer's own cuts, it has become more customary nowadays to play it in its entirety, and that is how George Bollett will play it on this occasion. Although the cadenza he will use for the first movement will be the shorter of the two, the composer's own favorite, and the one which he usually played himself. The three movements which comprise the third concerto are marked allegro, adagio, and again allegro, the second leading to the third without a break, and the finale concluding with one of Rachmaninoff's typical big tunes, full of the nostalgia and yearning, which are both a hallmark of his style and the key to his immense and undiminished popularity. And now, uh, the audience here at Edinburgh's Usher Hall await the arrival on the platform of the leader of the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra, Geoffrey Trabichoff. Bolette meets Rachmaninoff will continue in a moment. Right now at Marriott Hotel. George Bollett stands in a direct line of descent from such keyboard giants of the past as Joseph Hoffman, Joseph Levine, Leopold Kodowski, and Rachmaninoff himself, all pianists of the old grand school of the beginning of this century and each linked in some way with the Curtis Institute of Philadelphia, of which Hoffman was the director when, as a boy, George Bollett arrived to study there. Bollett's career was significantly launched at the age of 16, when he played at Carnegie Hall before an audience which included Hoffman, Godofsky, Rachmaninoff and Horowitz. And since then, he's travelled extensively, enjoying an international career which has seen him performing with most of the major orchestras throughout the world. In the next few months alone, he'll be playing in the Far East, in America, Canada, and London, not to mention a project to record most of the major piano works of Liszt over the next few years. <laughs> and here now, is tonight's solo pianist, George Bollett, coming onto the platform with conductor Brighton Thompson. The piano concerto number three in D minor, opus 30, by Sergei Rachmaninoff.
George Follett with the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra conducted by Brighton Thompson gave that performance of Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto No. 3 in D minor, Opus 30.